face-to-face. -to -face. And today we're going to talk about book, we're going to talk about uh, the Great Depression, we're going to, uh, I'm with someone from Baltimore coming to New York City to visit us. <laughs> And uh, so welcome to Laurie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, so you have a fantastic book oh. uh, who just come out? Yes, it just came okay. out in October. Um, it's about, uh, it's a classic murder mystery. Okay. It's um, set in the uh, middle of the 1930s in Oklahoma during the Dust Bowl years. Okay. Um, and that was uh, a period of during the Great Depression, which uh, encompassed all of America plus Europe, the economy was also yeah, had a great depression. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but the Dust Bowl was a particular um, climatic event in the high plains of the United States. And um, the, initially, everyone thought it was just a drought. Uh -huh. And it was, it was a very severe drought. But there was not that, was not the only reason um, that the Dust Bowl occurred. Um, what, what happened was you have to go back to the 1880s when um, this land at that point was just uh, plains and it was full of uh, prairie grass, which is a very tough grass that sends deep roots into the soil. It was um, buffalo uh, roamed yeah. this mm -hmm. area yeah, yeah, yeah. and the indigenous people hunted living or that. living, yeah, sure. right. Mm -hmm. So in the 1880s, the United States government opened Oklahoma uh, up to um, settlement by mm -hmm. um, white uh, frontiers people, and mm -hmm. they came in, and many of them wanted to be farmers, and they staked their claim and started ripping up the the sod, the this prairie grass that was with all these deep roots that was holding the soil in place. They ripped all that off to plow, to plow. and that worked out okay because there was not a drought mm -hmm. at that time. So even though that was not a smart thing to do, no one really understood the implications until the 1930s when there was this severe drought. Yeah. And so when you have a severe drought and you have no uh, prairie grass holding the soil in place, then you... It become dust. It's just dust. Yeah. It's just dust and sand and it, if the wind comes in, it starts swirling and there were massive dust storms for eight years mm -hmm. in these high plains areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and many people fled the homesteaders a lot of them went west to California and um, were picking fruit uh, John Steinbeck's grapes of wrath is yeah. about those people mm -hmm, who mm -hmm, left mm -hmm. some tried to stay um, even though their farms were decimated their you know their livestock there was so much dust in the air their livestock were dying and if they cut them open, it was just dust inside. Mm. Um, people, wow. young children got what was called dust pneumonia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But some of them did stay and tough it out. And um, one of the, one reason I wanted to write this book is that I had read a great book, it's a nonfiction, it won the National Book Award uh -huh. in 2006. It's called The Worst Hard Time. Mm -hmm. It's by Timothy Egan. And he wrote about the people who stayed, who stayed and tried to to survive, to, and to survive, to, and to right, develop. right. So th that's uh, my fictitious town in Oklahoma, or ma is made up of these kind of people. Uh -huh. And um, I, when I was reading about it, I, re I Egan's book just moved me. I read it like two times or three times, just back to back, which uh -huh. I usually don't do. And um, there was one huge dust storm in 1935. It was so massive. It came in during the middle of the day. The sky turned black. It was black for several hours. The dust moved through the high plains, kept going, came to New York City, dusted the city with dirt, and moved out into the ocean. It was massive, all this topsoil. Oh, wow. So I thought, wouldn't that be interesting to have a murder occur during this blackout? So that's what happened. So. That's the background of the, of the situation. Yes, of the, yes. Of the killer. yes. And then, so, uh, how did you end up picking that story? I mean, what, what was, it's, it, it's, a, it's a fiction? It's yes, all, it's, it's, it's all fiction. It's all fiction. Yes, I was a, I was a history major, okay. and I have a degree in history, and so I, I'm always interested in the, in the past, so mm -hmm. it's, it's accurately researched, mm -hmm. and that's just a, time period I'm interested in. Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was the president during the Great Depression, 
I think he's a fascinating person. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the storylines in here has to do with um, a young man who is in the Civilian Conservation Corps, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was a program FDR started um, in the 30s to help these young people, primarily young men who were jobless and t riding the rails and didn't were, had been asked to leave their own homes many times because their families could not feed yeah. them. Mm -hmm. And he wanted he set up this program called the Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC, and it was to give them work. And a lot of the work was. Um, reforesting, uh -huh. uh, soil conservation, mm -hmm. building dams. Sure. So um, in my fictitious town, mm -hmm. I have a CCC camp outside of town, mm -hmm. and one of the young men in the CCC um, is accused of murder. Of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, murdering this rain, this rainmaker <laughs> during this <laughs> storm. <laughs> so that's uh, I just I'm just fascinated by this period, and uh -huh. it, it still has ramifications today. No, I mean, no, there's it's, it's... Um, the, many of the New Deal uh, projects that FDR started, uh, Social Security. Mm -hmm. uh, they're still around. Mm -hmm. um, Many are not like the CCC. Mm -hmm. Although I think there is a, I think California started the CCC, restarted it for a while. So there is an interest in that. But um, and I think you know we look at globally. There's certainly issues of drought, and it seems to be occurring um, more frequently uh, due to climate change. And when you have drought and you have Loose soil, you get dust and dust storms. I know, but in, in, I mean, I know for Al in Algeria, right. the smart people from Europe mm -hmm. and the French went there mm -hmm. and then did exactly what you described. And wow. The story, I know very well the story, okay. where they remove all. So in the desert, you have yes. very small tree. Yes. And so they wanted to uh, cultivate the desert and get, get some space yes. to the desert. So yes. they remove. <laughs> this yeah. small tree. Yes. And so the desert grow one kilometer a year. Yeah. So it became it be, the, the zone became un, un, impossible, mm -hmm. and and so the people had to move out. The nomads had to make larger routes for them to be able to survive. It was a disaster. Yes. It, it didn't work at all, and they did it in many places. Even in France, they did it in. In some places where they remove uh, the lines of, of greens right. to yes. expand the, to expand the agricultural space, right. and then by doing this, uh, as soon as you have drown or any uh, wind mm -hmm. or anything, everything right. gets washed away, and then it's right. over. Yeah, exactly. No, no, it's a, the balance. It's a, it's a very uh, everything is there for a reason. So yes. it's, as soon as you remove, you unbalance something else. Yes, it's like exactly. in the body. It's, it's, it's a very particular uh, yes. story. That's true. Yes. So what are, are we learning? Are we <laughs> well, I don't know. As a, someone who's interested in history, I mm -hmm. feel like we're just we're not learning. We're just <laughs> repeating ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's one reason it's important to take the time to study history and um, know what happened before, so perhaps we can prevent it, hope, uh, or and or understand the ramifications of what occurred. Yeah. Um, so in America, when you have um, people brought over from Africa and enslaved, um, that doesn't that fact um, two hundred years later is still has ramifications today, and I think we need to. Remember these things and learn, and hopefully, change. <laughs> yeah, and then on that case, I mean, it's even a little bit more than than learning where you you really need to to work and 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 try to process that story with the people who have been affected by the yes. by, by the situation. Uh, and I don't I don't think the U.S. recognized no. yet slavery as what it was, and and, right. and try to. Uh, uh, any process of reconciliation with the uh, with the story is still a very uh, complicated moment of history. Right. Uh, and for the generation coming, it doesn't it doesn't stop. Even the no. the, the, the new uh, African Americans still uh, feel discriminated, and, yes. and for a good reason. Uh, coming from that. 
process coming from that uh, story. So yes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 it's a very complicated. Uh, and um, because we, you need to recognize your own uh, mistake and your own errors and your yes. own judgment and 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 I think uh, it's it's, it's uh, challenging for uh, for oneself to do that. It's um, yes, and it does, and things do carry on through generations, even if the um, even if unintentionally, things um, if it's a big enough event. A significant enough event like the the Dust Bowl, um, it doesn't. The Earth doesn't heal in a, a generation. Mm -hmm. um, the farming practices don't e quickly change. change. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the, there are improvements, but there's more to be done. Yeah. So. So what is um what, what do you uh, how's the book going? You just starting to promote it, and you're going to do a tour. You're going to do a uh, TV, you're going to go. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing any of those things. Um, I'm going to go to a couple book festivals okay. uh, in the spring. Okay. Um, and um, it, since it's a mystery, I've just, I'm a big reader of mysteries, but I mm -hmm. didn't know that there was a mystery community out there, but there is. So there's some oh, great. conferences for writers and readers and just to come together and talk uh -huh. about mysteries and. I, so I'm going to do some of oh, those. I just, yeah. Yes, it's, it's very it's exciting because I, yeah. I love a good mystery. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you, you're going to travel the part of the time, or a uh, little bit? I'll go down. I'm, um, since I live near Baltimore, I'm going to mm -hmm. go down to Virginia. There's a big mystery conference in Bethesda, Maryland, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a one that uh, rotates around, and that's in Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, and in New York, you were. I my my launch party was at the Mysterious Bookshop, which oh, is great. the best mystery bookstore in the world. Fantastic, <laughs> of course, in New York City. It's be, it's a beautiful it can't, bookstore. It can't be not be there. Right, the, um, it's just it's a beautiful store. It's uh, down down where the Twin Towers were, and mm -hmm. if you walk in, it just has floor to ceiling shelves. But there are it, it, many of the books are, are um, antiques or vintage, and then there's new books. But usually, if you go into a used bookstore, it has its own vibe, mm -hmm. and it just sort of smells funny, mm -hmm. and there's stacks and stacks and mm -hmm. stuff. This is so it it's clean. immaculate. Yeah. It has um, all these beautiful wooden shelves, these uh, library ladders, all the way up to the top. You can climb oh, up. Oh, you should tell me where it is. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's on Warren Street. Uh -huh. And. Um, so I had a party there, and that, uh -huh. that was fun. And, oh, great, uh, great. So, Perfect. But I'm glad to be here with talking to you. Yeah, no, great. Thank you for coming. And um, so what's next? What? Um... Well, this is, so this is my second book. The first one was just a purely historical fiction okay. that was set in the Midwest. Okay. This um, is a murder mystery. I'm going to use the same characters. I want to make this a series. Oh, yeah? Because it's about oh, a, the sheriff and his wife solve the mystery. And uh, as a reader of mysteries, I like a series. Mm -hmm. I want to read more. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Oh, that's good. Yeah. So you're going to have to come back? Yes, you're, I would love to. How long does it take to? <laughs> well, <laughs> a couple it's, years. <laughs> it's, it's, I will be with my kid. <laughs> yes, right. Well, <laughs> I started this pro writing right late in life, so I don't know how many more books I've got in me, but a couple more, I think. Yeah, good. You know, Perfect. So. Thank you very much okay. for coming. Okay, thank you. It. Thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you. <laughs> that was Face to Face, and please keep uh, watching your news on Presenza.com and subscribe to uh, on the YouTube channel, and thank you for watching. Hope to see you very soon.